Welcome back again, everybody. My name is John D. Healy. I do a podcast. It's called It's Good to Talk, and it sure is good to talk. It's also good to listen. I am probably known because I produced a book through COVID for my friend, Tony McGurn. His book is called, and that's how it all started. He was born in 1941 in Ireland, and he immigrated to the United States of America when he was about 16 years old. The stories range from in Ireland growing up to the age of 16. Lots of ups and downs. He lived close to the border in a place called Leitrim, and there was mass immigration from there, which I'll come back to you later in the podcast when I talk about, and, that, and we don't know who we are. As I met Finch No. 2 last week down at his book launch down in the Irish Art Centre. Now, also, I'm sponsored by Liffey Van Lines, a moving company here in New York City, and they've been around longer than, well, longer than the New York City Marathon. Running smoothly, everything is good there. Lots of experience, you can't buy experience. And if you need lifting done, let Liffy do the lifting. So what happened during the week? Well, I was supposed to have a guest today on a car expert talking about electric cars and gas cars. But he got caught in traffic. So I'm going to talk in general about out and about. So last Sunday was the New York City Marathon and it was a busy day for everyone. So elite healers were very busy after the marathon working out and all the way to recover after running the marathon very important so much so that the owner of elite healers adam cardona is hiring new staff because he built his clientele so his clientele have grown as a result of the marathon and if you would like to apply for the job you need to be a licensed massage therapist here in new york city and you can send your curriculum vitae that means latin for cv your cv to his website, elite sports massage therapist.com. So, moving on from there, you can also connect in with the IBO to see what's going on on the Irish Business Organization. A lot of J1 visa people are looking for jobs. I did go through the list actually in detail. I didn't see any licensed massage therapists there, but there's lots of other people. So, Adam will probably reach out to the IBO himself to put in his request looking for a massage therapist. And if you're not fully trained, I guess he can train you up and you'll be working in Park Avenue. Fancy, fancy, nice, nice address on Park Avenue, Elite Healers, 57th Street, Park Avenue. So I wish Adam well with his search for talent in the world of massage therapy. So what else is going on in the last week? Well, my friends up at, at the, in the Bronx, Bronx Economic Development uh, Community, Rob Walsh and Louis Garcia. They had a big day last Tuesday. They gave away, yes, they gave away, well, no, they didn't give away. An award was made to, let me make sure I got this right, of a million, do- a million dollars to the Bronx Community College. And it was all to do with the environment and green and all that. And there's lots of good stuff going on in the Bronx. I love the Bronx. Check that out, I love the Bronx.com. Because there's a lot more activities going on and there's a lot more incentives that Rob Walsh and his team have to give to entrepreneurs that want to develop in the Bronx. And if you need help with that, you can email me because I have a lot of the inside information and tell you about locations and maybe some properties that are there to be least rented. And you can move in and set your business up with the help of Rob Walsh and Luis Garcia and the team because they're there to help and it's good to have helpers to help you along the way with a new enterprise so today I'm coming you from Har- from Harlem because I want a mini vacation to Harlem I love Harlem because I was here when I was 16 years old and 17 years old and I worked for Liffey at the time and Harlem was different then it was interesting and exciting in 1976 and 1977 there was a lot of hookers in Harlem back then in the day because now, of course, you don't see hookers anymore because where are they? Well, they're on the Internet. But back then, the hookers in Harlem had to work very hard from five o'clock in the evening to five o'clock in the morning. And I really admire them, both physically and for the work that they did and their beauty. And they started work at five in the evening in Harlem and they worked on the five in the morning. And they were courteous and pretty and friendly. And, you know, prostitution goes back as long as the Bible has been around. And, and that was their business. And I know you want to ask me, did I spend money 
I always shop local. Come on, you don't ask, have to ask me that. So check out the Bronx Community Economic Development. And I want to get Rob and Lewis back on this podcast to tell us other achievements that are going on in the Bronx in terms of development and what's going on there and the incentives they have and how entrepreneurs can avail of the incentives. Extremely important. Now, other stuff that went on during the week. I was at a book launch last week for Fintan O'Toole. The book he launched recently, he has a lot of books. He maybe has 19 books out. But this book is called, We Don't Know Who We Are. So We Don't Know Who We Are refers to Ireland and Ireland country in general, all about Ireland, Irish history and all that. And the, the, the emphasis on the book is the trends in Ireland changing and who are we and who, who, who do we know who we are? I was born in County Mayo in Ireland on the West Coast. Of course, when the English invaded us, Oliver Cromwell cleared all my ancestors to the West Coast, thinking, of course, that Mayo was a shithole. Well, I can tell you, Mayo was far from a shithole. Just Oliver Cromwell didn't know we were sending us. We made the best of it. We loved the scenery. We loved the living by the seaside. We became self-sufficient in growing crops, in fishing, in the sea, in the river, and all, everything. We made the best of it. And the best of people probably came out of the west of Ireland from Kerry, Galway, Clare, Mayo, and all the way up to Donegal. Because a lot of us immigrated to America and to Australia, and indeed back to England, to help them build the roads. And indeed here in New York, there was no police force in New York City until the Irish arrived. Now you might say they didn't need a police force until we arrived, but the police force and the fire department, they, those were industries that we got into big time and climbed the ladder up to the top, pardon the pun if you're a fireman, and all the way, and so we, we, we developed ourselves. We, we came a long way from no Irish need apply. And I'm proud of that. Now, what, what else was going on in the book? Well, Fenton O'Toole is a, a, is a journalist, political journalist. He, I've known about him since a long time gone back. He's from Crumlin in Dublin, which is a part of Dublin that I am somewhat familiar with. And he is a very descriptive and deals with the real data and facts and indeed the political scene. And he he wrote another book called The Ship of Fools, okay? And that deals back to the 1980s when there was a lot of political stuff going on in Ireland with politics and indeed power and corruption and development. So where are we now in Ireland? Well, we have the lowest inflation rate in Europe. We have the lowest uh, unemployment, so we're fully employed with people. We do have a housing shortage that comes with prosperity, of course. and going from there, our population increased. So before the famine, we had 8 million people in Ireland. And due to the famine and immigration, the population decreased from 8 million to 4 million. So 4 million gone and 8, well, out of 8, 8 million, 4 million, that's, that's half the population. So what has been happening since then? Well, in recent years, since we joined the EU in 1973, thanks to Jack Lynch, the Cork, man who was the prime minister of Ireland at the time, but was good for our, would be good for our farming base to join a bigger market and a bigger community. And I agree with Jack Lynch. It was the right thing to do because we were depending basically on selling our produce to England. And, you know, let's say we weren't the best of neighbours. We weren't the worst of neighbours either, by the way. You know, we actually fought in World War I with, uh, under the British uh, flag, ironically enough. And, but then there was other skirmishes. And then in 1922, as I did a podcast here before with Brian Layden, my historian guest duty on the podcast here, explaining how Michael Collins made a deal that time for the 26 counties to be brought back to the Republic and the six could be figured out later on. Very much similar to the Good Friday Agreement. So if you go back into that podcast, I think myself and uh, Brian Layden explained it extremely well. Of course, thanks to the Americans, the Good Friday Agreement got a bit of strength when Bill Clinton and Hillary Clinton and the Clintons, uh, George Mitchell, of course, came in to back up the Good Friday Agreement. So we have 25 years now of peace and prosperity in 
Ireland, in the island of Ireland. A few little things to be sorted out in the six counties, and both sides are working hard at that. I think everyone aspires to the United Ireland concept whenever that will happen. I feel it could happen hmm, maybe in five years, maybe not, maybe no. Who knows? Anyways, getting back to Fintan O'Toole, and we don't know ourselves, and the ship of fools, of course. How do you explain the increase in population? So the population was 4 million, and now it's climbing up to 6 million and above. So who are those people? Well, those people are not born in Ireland, but born from Poland and other countries far and wide. So a 20% increase is a large increase. But these people are assimilating into the Irish culture and into the Irish population. And they are welcome. And they're assimilating into our language, believe it or not, because I speak my native language, Gaelic, Gaelga. I'll give you a couple of phrases later on to help you know, learn a little bit more about Gaelga and the Irish language. So these people actually are bringing their kids up to learn how to speak Irish. Just, I guess, from the point of view, they feel they're in a country called Ireland. And Ireland should have its own language, which we did, as my friend of Irish poet used to say, Gon Gon Gonchir Gonchanga or Gonchanga Gonchir. A country without its language is not a country, it's a nation without its without its language. So I don't want to get too political today, because sometimes politicals can politics can muddy up the waters. So what else went on with Finch No Tool? Well the his lecture took place in the Irish Art Centre, which is down on 11th Avenue on the west side near 55th Street. Beautiful venue, I would recommend it highly. If you look it up, irishcentre.org and see what shows are coming up. They have a beautiful restaurant, beautiful little bar and then a beautiful ambience where the theatre is upstairs on the second floor. It's wheelchair friendly, which is very important because I'm very, very much an advocate of wheelchair access for everybody in every building, in every place, because I was the first in Ireland to put in wheelchair access in my own restaurant in my valley, County Kildare. So I did, when Fenton had completed his talk on we don't know who we are, and it, he was maybe close to two hours like, talking and explained the whole thing. And in the, in the book, he explains lots of things that happened in the 90s in Ireland. And I was very involved in lots of things in the 90s myself in Ireland, mostly my restaurant, Mother Hubbard's in County Kildare. And my neighbours were three old ladies, four old ladies, actually, because my restaurant was on a motorway and a highway. So there was only one house near me, and everybody else was driving up and down the road, and everybody else stopped in, of course, and enjoyed the ambience and the food at Mother Hubbard's. So my neighbours next door, these old ladies, they were all, they all had worked for, for priests as priest housekeepers. Nothing wrong with that. But this was the highlight of the 90s, sorry, the 90s, was Bishop Eamon Casey, when he fell in love, I guess, or if he didn't fall in love, he fell in lust anyway. He fell into bed with a beautiful girl called Annie Murphy. She was an American girl. I mean, absolutely gorgeous. Who would want to sleep with Annie Murphy? But the bishop as can happen, any man, I guess, was tempted and they had a, a relationship and anything can happen in bed, it could even happen a bishop, right? And they produced a baby boy. The baby's boy, by the way, is Peter. So Peter is the name of the boy, just so you know. Remember that in a later comment, because the first pope name was Peter, okay? See, even though I don't go to Mass, I know my religion. Important. Now, let's get on about Annie Murphy and Bishop Casey. So my neighbour was a denier. Kate next door, Kate Kennedy, she couldn't take help herself to say Bishop Casey never had sex with Annie Murphy. Well, Kate, got news for you. She would come into my restaurant every morning to buy tin cigarettes as an excuse to get the gossip. And this morning she came in and was on the RT morning news, 8 o'clock news in the morning, that Bishop Casey had admitted, I love that in a man, or a woman indeed, 
if you if admit, if you tell the lie, own up and be honest, okay? And the bishop told the truth. He said, yes, I slept with the beautiful Annie Murphy, and we do have a son called Peter. So Peter, I assume, was here in New York, and Annie was here in New York. And if, I, if I'm repeating myself, deservedly so. I mean, she was a beaut. And I'm sure she still is a good-looking woman today, no doubt. And I'm sure Peter is a fine man too. He's probably in his late 30s now, if I do my calculations right, like 91, 92, maybe, yeah. So what else went on? Well, that was my comment for Fintan O'Toole. I know I extended a little bit for you guys. And Fintan laughed because he thought it was humorous, of course. Oh, by the way, get back to Katie. So Katie, my neighbor, was so annoyed that the bishop admitted he had sex with Annie Murphy, that she got angry and cranky. And she said, well, at least he didn't use a condom. Because in Ireland, then, it was a sin to use a condom in the Catholic religion. And I said to, uh, I said to Katie, well, maybe if he had used a condom, he wouldn't be in this predicament. And that kind of annoyed her more. You know, I have a way of needling people sometimes, not always. And that was it. So Fintan O'Toole, who wrote the books and wrote maybe 19 books, Ship of Fools and We Don't Know Ourselves, he extended on my comment by saying that deniers, and I mean, we we're talking here about the deniers of religious activities that happened in Ireland, sad to say, um, sexual abuse and by priests and nuns as well, both, and the whole adoption situation babies being aborted illegally, you know, and disposed of, got rid of, and buried, and hidden. And that, he explained, was the deniers of Catholic religion, and the, the, the system standing up for the religion. Indeed, the government standing up for the religion, because the Catholic Church and the government of Ireland for a long time Pardon the pun, were in bed together. They did a lot of good things too, like hospitals and schools and all that. So I won't deny that. I won't take it away from them. Because I don't want to offend everybody here on my podcast. The Catholic Church and the Catholic uh, people, priests, nuns, missionaries, they travel all over the world to do a lot of good work. But a few bad eggs, unfortunately, messed up everything for the benefit of all. And Bishop Casey, sadly, he passed away a number of years ago. And uh, one time, Annie got a grilling on the Late Late Show, which was a popular late night talk show. And the host was Gay Bird. I met Gay. He interviewed me a number of times. And he was mm, more on Bishop Casey's side. The audience seemed to be handpicked, and they were all on Bishop Casey's side. And Annie was in the hot seat. And they, they, they gave her a grilling, to say the least, you know, which I thought was very, very unfair for dear Annie Murphy. And then at the end, when it looked like she had actually won the discussion and won the debate to say, yes, she was the mother of the child, the bishop did have sex with her, no denying. What you ought to do, see a tattoo on the side of his leg to prove it? No, he did sleep with her. He admitted it, and let's get on with life. And it, it did rock the cradle, pardon the pun, and it rocked the boat for the Irish Catholic people to admit to themselves this happened. It really happened. But it opened the eyes up of people to realize there's a lot of stuff going on in the Catholic Church that wasn't out in the open. This is well out in the open. So when Gayburn, because he was such a fan of Bishop Casey, was finishing up the Late Late Show interview, he said to Annie Murphy, he thanked her for the interview, and he said about Peter, the son, he said, if Peter turns out to be half the man his father was or is, He'll be a great person. And Annie Murphy replied, and I love her answer. She said, you know what? I'm not too bad myself either. It was a great exit comment for Annie Murphy. And if she is listening to this or any of her friends, I wish her well. I have great admiration for her. And I hope her son is doing well. I hope, he, I hope he's half the man his father is. And I hope he's as good looking as his mother. Because she was a beaut. So let me move on to other out and about stuff. I want to give a shout out to Paddy McCarthy of the Irish Examiner USA newspaper. Paddy has a lot of news in the paper this week. And if you're into the music world, 
the Corps, the Irish band, they're, they're back touring in Australia. And the Celtic women are here touring in New York. But look up the Irish Examiner USA dot com get all the latest news from Ireland and get all the music news from Paddy McCarthy. Paddy's a good friend of mine. So you can get it online for free. So just look it up today and you'll see where Celtic women are playing and indeed the chords on tour. Lots of music and there's lots of events coming up again because we're getting into Christmas time with lots of functions everywhere and dinners and all that. Before you know it, we're looking forward to the new year and into March and more dances and stuff. So Paddy McCarthy, Irish Examiner, USA.com, get that. Now, I was also asked to give a shout out to Shannon Gales GAA Club. It's a football club here in New York. My nephew is involved with this one. So he said to give a shout out. And this is kind of interesting. This is good for if any people have young children that want to get them involved in sports. And sports is good and very important. For young people coming up. So let me read what he sent me here. So it is Gaelic football, hurling and camogie. Camogie is usually girls, but I think nowadays they no reason why girls cannot play the Gaelic football. The USA is a football team, Gaelic football, soccer team, whatever. So it's for boys and girls age five and up, no experience needed. Well, I like that because when I was five, I didn't have an experience in anything. So they are located at Frank Golden Park, College Point in Queens. But I do know they play games in Manhattan and in the Bronx and all that. And to contact them, look up shannongales.org. So shannongales.org. So you got a lot of information there today from me. IBO is worth looking up, ibo.org. And if you like other podcasts on Irish Affairs, you can look at Centerpoint by Paul Finnegan and Irish Stew by John Lee and his friend. They, they both call some podcasts, and they're a different style, but that's good. We're all different. We don't have to be all the same. So I'm going to leave you with a word of Gaelic today. Now, na cur ein rud ar an mair fada. I'll say it again for you. Na cur ein rud ar an mair fada. That means do not put anything on the long finger. If you have a task to do, do it in time. And with that, I'm going to say salon. And I'm going to say Shin Shkale, which means that's a story. I'll go space Shkale, that means we'll have another story. So, Son, the Song of Fall.